I finished reading the book. And I don't love it. Wait, 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 wait. If you are a bad guy, I gotta tell you, we have a strict no bad guy policy. If you're a bad guy, you need to like the video, unsubscribe, and get the hell out of here because you're not welcome, okay? Now that it's just us, let's begin. First of all, I want to say that this is a great book and it's got a lot of great information for beginners that are trying to get started with Linux, especially in the hacker forum. The author has over 20 years of experience and there's nothing to sneeze at. I'm not going to hear, go over here and discredit this man. He really did a really great job. Occupy the web, Linux basics for hackers. If you're a beginner, start it out. But before we begin, I just want to start out. One of my many mantras is motivation is great to get started, but it won't carry you to the finish line. What I mean by that is as a hacker in anything you do, you will run into snags, issues, problems, and roadblocks, and motivation won't carry you through that all the way. You have to have habits and dedication and whatnot. Not call it whatever you want, but you can't avoid the fact that there will be issues in your life and it won't be smooth sailing your whole life. Anyone can start a marathon, but each mile gets harder and harder and harder. If you're looking for a book review, the first 20 seconds is great. Just keep going, move on, buy the book, enjoy it. But I want you as viewers are, that are looking at your resources, I want you to find value in it. And if there is no value, I want you to stop it. If there's no value, stop it and move on. But I want you to understand how I was able to find value in something that was not necessarily appealing to me to begin with. I'm going to stop with the mantras. I just want to start off with some of the problems I had with the book before I get into the solutions and how they benefited me. And every resource you use as a hacker, you should be constantly evaluating its value for you. If the value is low yield, you have to find a way to supplement that book. The first issue I had was that the information covered in the book was just a little bit too basic for me. Second, the book wasn't modern enough to work with the latest version of Kali Linux. I was running into some commands that just wouldn't work or some configurations that don't apply to it. That takes me to my third problem with the book is that it didn't really have any error handling. So if I put in a command or I used a program that wasn't available or a configuration that was slightly different in the latest version of Kali Linux, it didn't tell me a way to move past that. It didn't give me a solution or a troubleshooting guide or it didn't offer any help, not even an online resource that you could go to in order to, you know, in order to update the commands for the latest version. I don't think he actually gave me the version that he that he installed at the beginning of the book. So it's not like I could go back to the right version or the, the version that he was using in order to follow along with the book more closely. Lastly, and probably the most importantly, is that the book didn't really make me feel that much closer to being a hacker. And I think that's what we're all about is trying to find the best resources to get to our end goal so that we could be a hacker. And before I go into my personal fixes, I want to remind you that this is just my personal opinion. This video is not to discredit the book or any of its value in any way. It has value, but I'm not certain that it's that it's meant for people at our level. If you have no experience with Linux, it's great. If you have some experience with Linux, you're going to find some wanting, I think. I'm going to try and keep this video short, but hear me out. Uh, so I can make my points clear and then you can decide how you want to move forward. If you want to buy it, great. If you want to borrow it from your library, great. If you don't want to buy it all and move on to the next thing, great. Number one, I felt the information covered was a little bit too basic. I'm no Linux expert, but I have used it. If you watched my last video, you would know that I use Fedora as a workstation. So my computer is Linux. Fedora is a distribu distribution of Linux, although it has different package management rules for it. It has different configurations for certain things, and it doesn't have all the tools that Kali Linux has. I'm familiar with Linux and I use it. That being said, there were some juicy tidbits in the book that actually led me to learn more about Linux. So even with some experience of Linux, you can still benefit, particularly chapter seven, nine, and 11 were great for me since it, I recognized my knowledge in variables in Linux and compression and logging were obviously lacking. Still, three out of 17 chapters is not great. But you aren't watching this to figure out how much I know in Linux. If you know nothing about Linux, then you should be fine. But if you run into a chapter that bores you or it's starting to lose your interest because you've been exposed to the information before, I have a solution for you. 
find supplemental information. I think the author will agree that this book is not meant to be a one-stop shop for all hackers to suddenly know everything you need to know. You will have to find modern and supplemental information to give you information about the subject. For instance, in my last video, we talked about the basic structure of the Linux file system and the directories that are under root, but we skipped over some of the directories that undoubtedly play a large role in the Linux file system, but were probably left out so as not to intimidate the reader or overwhelm them. So how did I fix the issue? I wanted more information about the subjects covered, but I wasn't getting enough from the book. So what did I do? I found a study buddy, sort of. Uh, actually, I used an AI model. I used an AI model as a search platform called find.com. I actually use it in my day-to-day -day, day -day life. One of the best things about it is that although it's gonna generate some text for you and give you some guidance that sometimes may be wrong, at least it sources its references so that you can easily go and fact check and find more information. Or if you, it only mentions like a couple sentences about some knowledge, anything that it adds in, it will source that. It's not gonna just pull it out of the thin air and be like, yeah, Linux is a, a magical beast that you can follow. No, it won't do any of that. So I used find.com, but if you want to use chat GPT, or I actually heard that Bing actually has a great search function as well, where it'll source it and everything like that. And it uses chat GPT four. So I think that having an AI model that helps you along with the studying, especially if you are looking to find more information, that's always great. Um, Particularly, I think it's important that we also look at the Kali Linux documentation. Like I said before, the Kali Linux documentation, diving into that and understanding how these things work is going to help you out a lot. So I have highly recommend it. I did it several times when I didn't understand what was going on with the repositories. And one aspect of the book is that it constantly references LeafPad. And I actually remember using Linux when it had LeafPad, but now it uses something called MousePad. Not the one that's on your desk, but it's just a graphical text editor that comes with Kali Linux. I, I, I use Find pretty often. Uh, I wouldn't say all the time, but I think it's really important to have AI study buddy to help you uh, like guide you through this kind of information. I recommend it, especially when it since it's free and it's up to date. Speaking of up to date, number two is the book is a little bit a little bit behind the modern version of Kali Linux, and I knew um, I knew it was going to be different right out of the gate when I loaded up my virtual machine and I saw the GUI was different. There's no way the author could have prepared for the all the latest versions of Kali Linux and see what uh, applications are going to get removed and whatnot. It's a written media, especially since it was written in 2019, so information from two to four years ago is going to be outdated here in 2024. But it's not the end of the world. In order to grasp the modern knowledge and especially the differences and looking through the change log of the of the new Kali Linux versus what they were using in 2019, I was able to go through the Kali Linux documentation and try to find where uh, where I was lacking that information, where the book was lacking that information, or it was a little bit outdated so that I can better understand the differences between what he was looking at then and what I'm looking at now. Like I said, it's not the end of the world that it's out of date, but this is one of the things that you got to consider when you're purchasing a book. Having it something that's up to date and ready for you is very instrumental and that's why a lot of people are looking at online resources instead of having a physical book. It, which takes me to my third issue, which appears to be some kind of, I think it's kind of deliberate on the author, is that there's no error handling, no troubleshooting, no guides or anything that'll help you through commands that don't work for you. I would found a few times where I would input commands and I've got errors in the terminal. Sometimes it would be a configuration issue or maybe the, uh, maybe it was just a newer version of Kali Linux installed. We've been through that issue. Whatever the issue was, the book offered no help. It had no guides. It had no structured set. It's like, oh, here's a, if you get this error, here's what you did wrong. It was likely because of my lack of expertise, but I quickly became confused and tried searching for answers online, um, which it kind of feels weird looking for answers for what could essentially be your textbook that's going to be guiding you through this. And I'm looking for a guide for the guide. You know what I'm saying? I think guidance would have been helpful and let me stay in the book longer. It was a little bit backwards in some spots where I'm being introduced to the tool, but I had to learn about the tool before I can learn about the tool. It's kind of weird, which of course takes me to my last part, which is part four. Um, Lastly, and certainly not least, is that by the end of the book, I didn't really feel like I was that much closer to being a hacker. Um, and I think that's 
kind of a good thing and a bad thing, but we'll come back to that. I, I think I'm sure that I know more about Kali Linux now than I had, than the struggle had before he started reading the book, but I was hoping to get a stronger grasp of the basics and more solid foundation, but more of this is more of like an introduction. Like here's what a tool is. Here's what a database is. Here's networking. But I didn't really feel like I built too much of my foundation just from the book. I had to look elsewhere in order to build that up more. Uh, although I will say the book did a really good job of explaining what the commands were, how what each option does and how it relates to what we were doing and what and the context behind it finding context is something very difficult to do and it did that i did find that i was not learning as much about the commands and about the the tools as i wanted to for instance in each chapter it would follow the same structure it would introduce a concept here's databases and then it would have you input a command start up your mysql database and then it would talk about the command and then it would execute more commands and then talk about those commands. But at the end of the chapter, there was an exercise. And now here's your moment. Here's your time that you can be just like, all right, here's what I want you to do. I want you to build up a big database. I want you to actually put in some pseudo data, go to this website, download some pseudo data and put it up on your database. Did you understand any of that? The point is that it was supposed to give me all that information, but instead it just asked me to input the same commands that I inputted earlier in the chapter. It's like, oh, now you know about locate input locate again. We just did that earlier in the chapter. So I didn't really feel like I built on too much from the chapter exercises. And I think the issue is that, I think the issue lies with that exercise portion. While the commands were sparse and full of great explanations, I, feel like, I felt like a more open-ended review, maybe a goal-oriented practice would have made me feel more hackery. Instead, the same commands that were that we were asked to execute in earlier in the chapter, we were asked to execute again in the chapter practice. It's kind of weird. In conclusion, I think there's a lot of value to be had by reading this book, I, but I don't think I'm the target audience. Uh, this book is more intended for those with with less exposure to Linux and even less exposure to the, uh, the hacking tools. It doesn't talk about any tools or how they work, but instead shows you how to navigate Linux and Kali specifically through the eyes of a budding hacker. But I gotta tell you, this video is not meant to be a book review. Instead, I want you to focus on the solutions that we had to these problems and how I was able to fix it. If I didn't purchase this book, I would have never gone into the resources and the solutions that I found in order to help me learn more about this to the topic. I wouldn't have learned more about how to install Snore or the repositories or how to remove repositories or anything about those things. Um, and if you have no idea what I'm talking about, then I think that you should pick up the book and I think you should run into those problems and you should learn from them and grow from that. I think this book is absolutely perfect for someone who is starting from step one or even step zero. I think the spots that I found wanting inspired me to learn more so I can get to the finish of this book and tell you guys about it and give you this video to wrap it all up. I'm going to leave you with my best recommendations so that you can avoid pitfalls that I ran into. Number one is try to find this book in a local library or borrow it from a friend. While this book is not expensive, I can't justify buying it at its full price of $35. I would only recommend it if it was on discount. I mean, it's only 200 pages, 17 chapters. You'll get through it in a whole week. I think the biggest reason why I can't recommend you buy this at full price is because most of the information there is already available for, for free online. What it does is it curates that knowledge and puts it in a nice, neat package for intro, for entry-level learner. So why would I even recommend that you still get this book if it doesn't have that much value for you? If you're asking me that question, I will respond to you with another question. What have you done between the first time you've seen me and now? If it's been a week or a day or two days or even 40, 45 minutes since you've seen me and you still haven't done something with it and you don't know where to begin, this is a great book. It's going to give you an introduction. It's going to give you some kind of guide and some kind of structured way to look at hacking in general. So I think this book is a great place to start and it has lots of knowledge. And though I know a lot of what's already covered in the book, it actually becomes some kind of a physical talisman, something that I can just carry with me and say, yeah, I'm doing it. This is my first step, something I can hold 
something I can hold and say, I have this, I'm doing it, I'm studying it, and I'm gonna finish it. And when I do finish it, it gives you this sense of accomplishment. It gives you this sense that I finished what I was looking to do, and I did it. No one can say that I didn't, and nobody could take that away from me. I'm one step closer to being a hacker. Maybe not a full step, but I'm one, one step closer. And when I go to my next step, this will give me some level of con context of what we're talking about. Which takes me to my second recommendation. When you read this book, Think about the chapters that pique your interest. If something bores you, put it in your back pocket. If something interests you and it's like, oh, I want to get into Wi-Fi hacking. I want to get into wireless hacking. I want to friggin' prank my friends by taking it over their Bluetooth devices. Hold on to that. And lastly, I've got to recommend you got to use an AI study buddy. Nowadays, AI is everywhere, and I'm not saying that you had to jump on the bandwagon and buy the latest AU AIs if you're not making AI freaking a uh, YouTube channel to earn passive income, you're freaking missing out. No, I'm not talking about that. Nobody wants to contribute to the garbage of the internet. We want to learn and gain and use our tools wisely. I gotta tell you, this can be useful. It's useful for me in my day-to-day -day life. I was thinking about a, I'll, I'll be brainstorming with an AI because I can't trust sometimes the people that I work with to give me the answers that I'm looking for. I definitely recommend having an AI study buddy, use it as a tool, because it can help you along the way. But that's one of my biggest recommendations because I'm gonna continue to do that throughout my chapters. If you're afraid of AI, that's fine. You can watch me do it. You can live vicariously through me. That's fine. Those are my recommendations. One, uh, don't buy it at full price. If you can check it out from your local library or borrow it from a friend, that's great. Two, if, when you're reading this book, think about what you're gonna do next. Think about what piques your interest. I think it'll help you out a lot. And three, Definitely get used to using AI to help you through this. You're going to find gaps in the book that need to be filled by AI. And you're going to find gaps in the AI that you can help, that can help you build your next steps too. But that's enough about the book. I think uh, Linux Basics for Hackers, Linux Basics for Hackers, I recommend it for newbies and people that are trying to learn Linux and you're not familiar. It's a great place to start and it's a great place to have training wheels to learn more about it. In my next video, I want to dive deeper, more into the pitfalls that you'll have while studying. Uh, I do want to go further and get uh, some vulnerable machines and learn about new to learn about tools like Burp Suite and Wireshark, InMap, and um, Metasploit. I think those are really important that we learn those things. But first, I want to talk about the pitfalls that you're going to have while self-studying because if one of those questions kind of felt little bit personal for you is like what have you done between my last video and this one if that felt too personal for you you gotta start wondering why we gotta look at why you're self-studying why you're relying on me for self-studying well that's okay it's not gonna carry you all the way to the end of your goals because you and my goals don't align a hundred percent this is impossible there's no way you want to do everything that i want to do a hundred percent of the way we're going to dive deeper into the pitfalls of self-studying and what kind of issues you can run into while finding those resources and studying uh, and, and building your studying regimen. We're going to look at every way to install Kali Linux. I'm talking phone. I'm talking about USB. I'm talking about your laptop, your computer. If you don't have a computer, I have a solution. I'm going to show you the best ways that you can actually get started and you can break down those barriers and make the, the make the barrier for entry super low so that you can run out of excuses to study and get to your goal. I think uh, in the next video, we're also going to talk about mental tips that'll help you defeat your negative self-talk and eliminate distractions that are dominating your life. And remember, no bad guys, no bad guys allowed. Unsubscribe if you're a bad guy. Make sure you drop a like and then leave. Now that it's just you and me, I'll catch you next time. By the way, we are making a discord. Keep an eye out. Maybe two.